Hi, welcome to Two Batches. Two Batches Cooking is about home style with ease. I'm Maria. And I'm Rosemary. Welcome in. Let's go inside and get started. Amen, sister. Amen. Woo! All right, well, hi. Um, today I'm going to make some Swedish meatballs. It's a hearty dish, good feeling. Okay, today I'm going to make some Swedish meatballs. It's a recipe from my aunt, and it is homemade meatballs in a rich, creamy sauce that's just wonderful. Sounds great. And I'm going to make some crepes or some crepe, as you would say in French. I'm going to do one that is sweet and one that is savory, one is sucre, one that is salé. So the, the, the sucre crepe is the dessert crepe and it is a Nutella. And so many of you may be familiar with that kind of crepe already, it's really good. And the savory one, I'm just gonna roll into a cigar style and it's called a two cheese and salsa crepe, which I think you will love. So let's get yeah. to it. Wonderful. Okay, so I have a pound, actually it's a little more than a pound of hamburger, a half a cup of breadcrumbs, and one egg is in the bowl. I am going to add to that approximately a fourth cup of diced onion and a tablespoon of fresh parsley. So I will add to this a half teaspoon of garlic powder. and it calls for an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Does anyone really measure an eighth of a teaspoon? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, just. And then it's a half a teaspoon of salt. You'll also, we'll also season the sauce a little bit, so both, both of the, the meatballs and the sauce will be well seasoned. So you just mix this up like they do in Sweden <laughs> or Ikea if you go there <laughs> to their cafeteria and have their wonderful meatballs. But So once it's pretty much mixed up we're gonna just go in there with our hands and get everything well mixed together. So we have it all mixed. You don't want to mix it too much and toughen the meat, you just want to mix it together till everything is is well well incorporated. All right, you can easily just take a spoon, take a spoonful, form them by hand. I do have a cookie scoop. That's what I don't know. It's it's a scoop. Um, I believe it's a one tablespoon. I use it for cookie dough mainly, but I um, you can use it for anything. So the meatballs will be similar size you just want to don't pack it so that they're round hard golf balls like when you buy them at the store you want it loosely packed and i have a tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil heating in a pan so once i get these all shaped up we will cook them it doesn't take long it just takes I think less than a minute on each side. You're just turning them until they're all brown, and that's it. We use the remove them from the pan, and I will use the same pan with the drippings to make the creamy okay, sauce. So I've made the meatballs. Now I do know that there was a little more than a pound of hamburger because I buy it in bulk and then um, break it up and put it in the freezer, but. All right, so the meatballs are done. I just have removed them from the skillet. And depending on how much fat is in your hamburger, um, the recipe calls for four tablespoons of butter, but I'm only adding one because it's got plenty of fat from the meat. And you don't, you really, you wanna use all the drippings and everything because that's gonna just enhance the flavor of the sauce. So we have three tablespoons of flour. So we're creating a roux. And I'm gonna just use the whisk and cook this 
until it turns light brown. And then once, once this, and I did put the, um, when I cooked the meatballs, the, um, it was on medium heat. I did put it on low. So there's a lot of little onions and meat bits. So just let this cook a little bit. And then I'm gonna add two cups of beef broth, one cup of heavy cream, and then I have some Dijon mustard and Worcestershire sauce. And then I'm also gonna add a little salt and pepper. You do wanna make sure that you keep stirring this because the flour will burn. So that is kind of taking on a brownish hue. So I had a bouillon beef cube. And I'm going to add one cup of the heavy cream. Ooh, doesn't that look good? It's good. That's the Swedish part. <laughs> the cream? The creamy part, yeah. <laughs> mm. So I need a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Just gonna wing it there. And a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. So now you cook this until it thickens. It takes just a few minutes. And then I'm gonna add the meatballs with any juice that has ran out of them. And I will put it back in the sauce and cook it for just two to three minutes. Okay, I am a, I forgot, I have to add some salt and pepper to the sauce. Okay, so the sauce has thickened. And now I'm going to add the meatballs back into the sauce. With like I said, any juices, we'll just add extra flavor and bury them in there. And I'm just going to let them cook for a couple minutes to heat through. Okay, so we're gonna do a dessert crepe and a main meal crepe, or a dinner crepe. So the dessert crepe, hopefully you know, is um, Nutella, and hopefully you've eaten this in your life before. It's really good. Oh and, yeah. And then for the um, meal crepe, what I've, it's going to be a two cheese and salsa crepe. So um, I took one cup of kind of a small curd cottage cheese, and one cup of um, a shredded cheddar, half a cup of sour cream, salt and pepper, and then I cut up green onions and I just mix that up. And then we'll do the salsa later when we plate it. So, there are many ways to do crepe. If you have a normal kind of shallow fry pan or, or a pan, kind of, you know, pancake pan that you can use on your oven, that's fine too. I used to have one of those, I don't anymore. This is kind of like an old fashioned contraption that's really cool. Um, and what you do is you get your batter set and then you turn this on and plug it in and you dip it in and you lift it off and then you go like this and it cooks, but I haven't mastered this yet, so we are not <laughs> going to use that today. <laughs> so many years ago, I bought this crepe maker and you can make lots of stuff on this, so we're just going to use that. So that's on kind of a five setting. And this is the crepe batter that's been sitting out for about, mm, I would say 30 to 40 minutes. So there's flour in here, there's milk. There's uh, two tablespoons of oil, um, eggs, and salt. So um, you'll get all those measures on our recipe. So here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're going to get a little bit of, you know, slipperiness with this butter going on here. And so I'm just gonna pour kind of what I feel like I need in the middle, a little bit in a circle. And sometimes when I feel a little bit like doing this, I just make this a little wider. They don't have to be perfect circles. And then you just let it cook. This tool is great because you use it. Once you're ready to flip over, you can use this to flip everything over. I'm just gonna, this is just like a pancake. So when you see the bubbles starting to form and you can go like this and see, does this feel 
stable enough to turn, um, then you can flip it over. So we're going to do um, one, I'm not sure how much this will make, it's gonna make a lot of them, but we'll get, we'll assemble one dinner crepe and then we'll work on the dessert crepe so you can see how that is. And then we'll plate them and eat them afterwards. So you can see this is changing color. It's a lighter color and this is more of a darker color on the outside. So that's when I kind of go like this and I sort of feel underneath, is this a good time to flip it? And I would say yes. Sometimes your first crepe is a little lighter than the rest of your crepes and that's fine. And they don't have to spend a long time on this side, but give it a little bit of time on this side so it gets cooked as well, all right? And so this is probably done. I'm just gonna, oops. I kind of broke that a little bit. So just slip your thing right under and then flip it out on your cutting board. So this is our dinner crepe. This is our filling, which I told you about. And we're just gonna get it right in here. In the same way almost you'd make an enchilada, this is what you're doing. Okay, then you're just gonna roll it cigar style. So this is one style of crepe that you can make. And you see the edges don't really matter if it's not a perfect circle in the end, your product is nice. Perfect. So now let's move on to the dessert crepe. Do the same thing, just like we did before. Get this a little bit of a circle, which is great. That's a pretty big circle, so I'm not gonna use this tool. I'm just gonna let that cook. Move this over. Bleeding a little bit, but that's okay. You can kind of go like this. Stop. So this is the French style one with the Nutella. We're gonna make this into a triangle. So I'll show you how to do that. And it's very kind of common when you're walking along and you buy a crepe in France. A crepe Nutella will be in kind of in a, um, in a triangle. You can get a, a crepe with just sugar or a little bit of lemon squeezed on it. So that's another crepe sitcom, it's just sugar and lemon. Crepe sucre or sucre is just with sugar. And so sometimes there's ham and cheese in a crepe. So you can also do that. So I'm gonna test this a little bit here. I might give it like another few seconds just to make sure it's stable and intact before I flip this. Okay, I think we can do it now. I'm gonna turn it over. There's a nice dark crepe. That looks really good. If you have a perfectly circled pan, it will make a circle perfect. So, um, all right, so let's do this. Okay, so Nutella, this is a little bit um, thick, so you wanna get this on right away so it can melt. melt. Yum! I know. So you're gonna spread this goodness because, God, it's so good like frosting a gorgeous cake. And so what the French do is they fold their crepe into a triangle. So your dessert crepe then becomes a triangle and you can cut off some of these if you wanna make it look a little bit nicer, but that's it. And you usually put powdered sugar and you're done so we can plate these. Oh. So here we are. Yum. So we're always like going, we go a little bit Northern European, Eastern European, so here we are. So we have the Swedish meatballs, mm. and I'm serving, you can serve it over noodles, you can serve it over mashed potatoes, with cooked potatoes. I actually have um, cauliflower rice that we're using today, but, and then just put a little parsley on top to add a garnish. And then these are the, the sale or the savory crepe, um, the two cheese and salsa. And then we have the Nutella crepe with a little bit of um, powdered sugar sprinkled on. So we'll have those for dessert, but we yeah. gotta get that poured. Here, yes. Yep. Let me. The mighty, the mighty addition to any meal, right? <laughs> the, the nice the cold. Finishing topper. Cheers, so. batch. Cheers to you. Mm. That's a nice That's one. Good. Okay, let's dig okay. in. I'm gonna so, do a spoon. I'm gonna do a spoon. Okay. Tender meatballs. Mmm. Sauce is great. Sauce is outstanding. 
So, and, you know, this meal is so quick and, oh my God, this is so good. The meatballs, once you make your own meatballs, you really won't want to buy them no. again. I'd add so much. And this is a recipe that actually my mom got from my Aunt Edith. And um, she was a wonderful cook. I had a lot of aunts and uncles who were great cooks. So I'm glad I get to share this recipe with you. Mm. That's, but I oh. want to dig into the crit. Mm. Cauliflower rice is good too. Yeah, take a mouthful of that one. So this is the savory one. And it has some salsa on top of it. Mm. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's so good. That's super easy too. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. These Des are good. Dessert? Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back and finish these. We promise. Matter, We're not yeah. going to waste food. We're just going to try everything here. And I know the Nutella crepes. Yeah. Please, again, just get some yeah. Nutella. Yeah, we don't even have to taste this. This is a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Chocolate paste. Heaven. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, good job. Follow us. Okay, yes. We're recipes on Facebook. We're on YouTube. Follow us, like us, and we will see you soon. Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers.